How's it going everybody? It's Gorilla Man here back with another Car Mechanic Simulator 2018 video. In today's video guys, uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than normal. And by a little bit, I mean a lot different. Um, we're going to be taking some customer cars today and be doing some orders um, in order for me to get a little bit more barn finds. Because that's why you that's one way you can get barn finds from doing stuff um, in here. So... We're going to start with this Porsche 911 RS America. So this guy says... I'll, I'll, read, I'll read you what the uh, what the invoice is. Okay, so this is what it looks like right here. Um, so it's a Porsche, you know, RS911. It's really, really, really expensive. Um, so the way cu these customer orders work is, is they tell you, they give you a summary of what they think is wrong. Sometimes they don't even know. Um, so right now they want us to repair these damaged body panels. So we can either repair them or we can buy new. We'll repair to save us some uh, cash. Um, and then we have to repaint it. So this shouldn't take us long. We'll do probably a couple of these in this video, um, but I'm just gonna show you guys how the other part of this game works, which is the whole repair cars for customers aspect. So we'll put this over to the lifter. So what we'll body panels? So front left door, front bumper, rear bumper. All right, um, front window, right body window A. And the other window. Okay. And that's it. That's all they want done. So even though this thing still looks really bad with all these parts being missing and everything, um, that's all they want done. So let's see. Let's do their front bumper here. All right. And there's one part. And then the front left door. So we're going to have to go pick up these parts um, because we don't have them. So 911... RS. So we gotta make sure you buy the right parts now, guys. So nine eleven. Let me see which one was this exactly. It's nine eleven RS America. There we go. Yep, this is the correct version. Um, so then we also are going to need um, a front window. Rear window, right body A. Uh, we already got the front bumper. We're going to need the rear bumper. I think that was it. So there's that. There's this one, and this one, and that one. And then I don't think he asked us to do the door, did he? Okay, so they did ask us to do the door. So I'll pull that door back off. We'll pick up a left hand front door. Let's paint this, or we'll have to paint that. Um, we'll see if that works. So there we go. So we got all the body panels that they want fixed, we got fixed now. So we don't need to do any other work, guys. Any other work. Um, and now all we need to do is go spray paint that. So I'll go back to here, uh, move this, go to the paint shop. Um, what I would really like to do to this car, obviously, is I'd like to strip off all these panels, rebuild the body, um, completely rebuild the frame repair all the rust do wheels and all that but these guys they don't want it so well, let me see what, what color do they want do they want factory color repaint the car in the stock color all right there we go wow that was super easy so just like that, we only spent maybe $2,000 in total, and we get a total job payout of $11,000. It's not not too shabby at all. Cars complete front license plate is missing from car. Oh, okay. Can't forget. Let me throw these ones back on. Let me go back to this rear one. I totally about forgot those. There we go, and there's a quick 11K right in our pocket. We literally had to do basically nothing. That took us, what, two minutes? Let's go in here, see so what else we got. Ooh. What does this guy want us to do? Caster Avalanche, Dodge Viper. Let's work on the, the Viper here. So. Let's see what this work order has. Ooh, this one looks good though. Looks really good. So car status. So they got sloppy steering, suspensions rattling, and the brake system. So it sounds like this boy is gonna need 
some suspension parts right away. Um, first thing what we'll do here, yeah, first thing we're going to do, guys, uh, one of the things that you want to do with these repairs, let me just, there we go, just make sure she starts. Um, but the next thing you want to do, uh, we can actually use this because I never used this part because we never need to. Take this on the test path. So the test path is over here around the corner to the left. It literally just looks like a shed, but it's a whole room in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to test out all of the braking and suspension components. All right, let's, let's proceed. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to accelerate. Place the front two wheels on the tester. And then we press and hold the brake. There we go. We'll drive forward and we'll do the rears. There we go. And now we're going to get bumpy, test the suspension here. Jiggles it around, sees what is happening. And then it's going to do the rear. All right, and then test complete, and it tells us exactly what has issues. So right here, if you guys look at this, you can see the pads, the discs, the front shock absorber, um, and it looks like two rear double wishbone shock absorbers are also bad. So that gives us a really, really easy uh, look into what is wrong with this. So we still haven't discovered what the steering is, but we discovered a lot of the suspension rattling, um, so that helps out a lot. Let me see what else we can do. Um, don't need to do any of this. We could, we could break down some diagnostic parts. So let's see here. We can do OBD scanner. And with the OBD scanner alone, we saw how it shows us now that the ABS module is bad, which is really, really neat. Um, cause I probably wouldn't have noticed that without that. Actually, I guess I probably would have noticed it, but you can see right there that it's obviously bad. Um, then we go into more tools. Um, we'll do a fuel, t fuel pressure test just because I don't think you said there was anything wrong with the fuel system, but we'll test it just to be sure. Yep. Looks great. Um, next one, electronic meter. It's going to test all the simple electronics. So, uh, fuel pump, steering racks, all these stuff, I think. All right, everything's good in there. Um, and then we'll finish it up with a compression test. The compression test is going to compress the motor. Um, or it's going to crank the motor and it's going to test the compression to see how well the pistons are. See, so make sure there's no leaks or anything. There we go. So, looks like we got most of the stuff figured out that we need. Probably about 50% we figured out just from doing these tests. Which could save us a bunch of money in the long, long term here. All right, and now the first area that I see us having issues in is the front side. The front side has definitely bad uh, bad brakes on both sides. So we're going to grab that first, guys. Hop into that side first. Take these off. So this is such a different experience to uh, do rather than do the, uh, the usual take apart an entire... Yeah, there we go. Take apart an entire car. Um, looks like these tie rods are bad. Pretty much anything you look at and you see this is rusty, it needs replaced. Especially with something right like this right now, we're going for the 97% uh, um, total at the end. So anything that you put on has to be 97% or better. Pull off this caliper. It looks like that brake pad's good too. Probably like a hundred. Yep. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be the steering is all the tie rod and steering rack. This will be sloppy suspension right here. All right, there we go. Well, that looks like... Wait a second. Did I see something up in here? Oh, we did. Okay. Looks like we got a bad hub bearing up in this one, too. Let's pop over to this side. Looks like we have another bad hub bearing. Hmm, okay. Let me pop this side off. So yeah, guys, basically the whole point of this video is to show you guys that if so if you're playing this game, um, there's other things to do other than just repairing a car from start to finish every single time. 
Let's off this axle, make sure that bearing's good. Alrighty, so then looks like this whole backside is done. And then one of these shocks, I think might have... No, it was the double wishbone, that was what was bad. Not these parts. Um, just to be sure, really quick guys, I'm going to check the wheel hub bearing back here. Let me pull out this drive axle. Alright, it looks good. It looks fine. Alrighty, there we go. So now... We just have to go over here and... Let's see here. We need one disc, two ventilated. So we'll go here, main shop... So, two ventilated. Hope this works. Alrighty. Then get this room back on. This looks like 335s in the rear, 295s in the front, I think is what it is. And then, what is this? This is double wishbone shock absorber. All right, so let's get that set up. So let's pull these apart. And we're gonna need a front spring. And we're also gonna need caps. Because it looks like the, uh, the actual shock, I think, itself was fine. Oh uh, no, I think we needed the double wishbone, not the caps. Dang it. There we go. So now we can push these parts together and get ourselves our shocks. And while we're waiting for that to compress, let's grab ourselves some wheel hub bearings. Because I know we're going to need two for the front there. At least you didn't have to do wheels. Wheels are a pain. Wheels take a long time, as you guys, uh, as you guys have seen. So we'll go in reverse. We'll start with this side first. Get that on. Looks like we're gonna need a new steering rack, along with matching inner and outer tie rods. Then we're also going to need some. What's that called? Oh, it's the linkage. That's what it is. Oh, wow. We have a lot of those links. Looks like we didn't really need them, did we? All right, let's get this. I think we bought everything we needed. There was only one thing to repair, too, which kind of sucks. Because that just means... Oh, yeah, the linkage. Or the steering rack. Um, because that means that we had to spend a little bit more money than I wanted to. Oh, wait. That's the part not discovered. Oh, it's the ABS module. That's why. I was going to say, I was like, I don't want to put all this stuff back on until we know that we're 100% fixing every single issue that we have here. tie rods in and then looks like we can finally finish up this brake side and then the rim there we go now let's check this out this is good this is good so then all we need to do is Ooh, we need a brake pad and then the ABS. So which brake pad did we not do correctly? <laughs> Looks like this one here is fine. That one's 100. That one's 100. It's one of these ones then. Aha! I found the culprit. That's why doing the uh, 
the path testing is really, really helpful because if you click overview mode, you can then see which ones are good and which ones are bad. And that saves you time from having to tear apart the entire car tracing down one issue, which I have done many, many times in the past. All right, there's that. Then we'll see if we can repair the ABS modules, but I'm not too uh, hopeful on getting these guys repaired. So there's the module and the pump. Okay, so we got the pump repaired. Now let's just see if we can get the module repaired. Or we'll pick up a new module. Not, not repair, we'll pick up a new one. this I wonder what the price we're gonna be uh, paid for this is gonna be Wow actually that was not nearly as good of a payout as I was hoping so we got interesting so we got seven thousand six hundred and ten dollars for that order and we spent thirty six hundred dollars fixing it so we only made like another 30 stuff on there. But hey, look at that. We got a barn location map. Oh, we're going to sell all these old parts that we don't need. Sell anything that's below 54% condition. Yes, yeah, so we'll add that barn find. It will grab this case. Let's see what we get in this case. Maybe another barn find? Nope. Just rocker top of the cover. Oh, it's a scoop. It's a plus one scoop. That's pretty sweet, actually. Looks like no other barn finds, then. Yeah, it looks like no other barn finds for us. That's fine. But yeah, we got one barn find from that one, though, which is pretty, uh, pretty good. And then we also just hit level 45, guys. So I can finally get this level 3 educated thing. Ex instantly examine 20 parts when seeing a car for the first time. Order, barn, junkyard, or auction. So we'll buy that upgrade. And we still have a ton of more upgrade points, but I can't really do anything with them. Because um, I've spent them all. That's sweet, though. And then this last one is called Lucky One. It's called Good to be Lucky. I'm not sure what that does yet. I'll probably have to look it up. Um, but we're five levels away. So it's... Still quite a still quite a trek for us guys still quite a trek. It's another what? 10,000 parts 10,000 parts to take off before we can get there. So let's get cracking away at it, but let's go to the barn find Let's see if we can find something very interesting if I decided if we find an El Camino I will buy the El Camino because a ton of you guys have been asking for El Caminos What do we got? What do we got? Show me the money. Whoa. Is this a Mustang and a Charger? A Mustang and a Charger sitting side by side? What is this? Any junk stuff in here that looks good to us? Hey, we'll take that case. Don't mind if we do. Alright, well that works. Blazer trunk, we don't need that. Alright, so we found another charger. Oh. Let's pick that bad boy up. 30k. That's a little pricey, but hey, these barn finds are a lot better um, condition than junkyard finds by a long shot. And this Salem Spectre Fastback, though, guys, this is a good one, too. This is also, um, this is basically like a 69 Mustang. It's basically the exact same thing. And that, actually, we might be working on that one next episode because I would love to make a replica of the Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds. If you guys haven't seen that movie, great movie, but I would highly recommend it. Uh, but yeah, no, I think maybe next episode we'll try and make a, uh, a replica of that. So we'll buy the case. We'll bring the case back home with us. Uh, when we get back, let's open it up and see what we got inside of it. I'm hoping I really want to get an engine with like plus five quality. Or also another barn find. That'd be cool. Ah, crankshaft, knuckle, and something else. 
Is that a thermostat? Oh, it's a rotary water pump, actually. A V10 crankshaft plus five. That is really, really, really good, actually. I mean, speaking, we should just get... We should just start working on a motor and try and build it up as much as we can. I think that'd be really good. Uh, but guys, we're going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Some, something a little bit different, you know. Uh, working on other people's cars. Taking some orders here. I think this is like a story mode mission. Yeah, this is a story mission that I need to do. Um, so I might just go through. Oh, hey, Lamborghini. Ooh. Uh, but I might just go through and do that uh, here soon. I'm not sure if I'll do it recording it or not. Um, but I want to try and get some of these story mode missions done. Um, just because it'll help progress the game a little bit more. But, um, if you guys enjoyed this type of episode, leave a comment down below letting me know. Also, hitting that like button helps a lot. And if you guys are not yet, hit that subscribe button because we are getting closer and closer to 100,000 subs every single day. And I thank you guys very, very much. Uh, but if you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button and I'll see you all in the next Car Mechanic Simulator video.